We praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king, the master, the sustainer, the creator of the seven heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, I remind myself as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us all, O oh, you who believe, have fear of Allah and do not die except in the state of submission, except in the state of Islam. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has a way, he has a system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a sunnah. And this sunnah is up to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He picks and chooses what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, and no one, no one questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of all of the planets, of all the planets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of the billions and billions of angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam to be the best and the greatest. And Jibreel is not necessarily the biggest. There are angels that are far bigger than him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. Out of the 12 months of the year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the month of Ramadan. Out of the seven days of the week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the day of Jum'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses what he wants. And out of the billions and billions of human beings, out of the billions and billions of human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose 125,000. And He made them His prophets and His messengers. This was the cream. And from the 125,000, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose five. And He called them the prophets of power and might and strength. Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Nuh and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected one. Allah didn't say to the one that you are the greatest from the prophets and messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say to this one that you are the greatest from the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected one and said to this one that you are not only my greatest prophet, you are not only my greatest messenger, but you, O oh Muhammad, are the greatest creation I have ever created. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose your Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, when He addressed all the other prophets, He says, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ Ibrahim, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ Nuh, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ Isa and Musa. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He spoke to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He didn't give him salam. Rather, he said to him, Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuha al-Nadina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. This was the honor that was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Allah and his angels make salam on him. O you who believe, make salam on him and submit towards him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the honor that was given to your beloved Prophet. But I ask you sincerely, how much do you know about him? The Sahaba, they describe him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said he was neither tall, neither short. He was of medium build sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inclining towards height. They said his skin color was neither black, neither white. It was what they call like a pasty. He was, everything about him was middle. Everything about him was the middle way. They said his face was round like the moon. He had a large forehead, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had arched eyebrows with a gap in the middle. He had long eyelashes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had jet black hair. His hair was jet black. It was neither straight, neither curly. It was wavy. 
And sometimes he used to grow his hair, sometimes to his shoulders, sometimes to his ears, but it never went past his shoulders. And sometimes for the ibadat, like Hajj and Umrah, he used to shave completely. He had high cheekbones, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had some red on his cheeks. He had large eyes that were black. His eyes were black. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said he always smiled. Always smiled, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They described his teeth to be like hailstones, white. And he had a gap between every tooth. He had a thick beard, contrary to what some people want to believe. In the authentic narrations, he had a thick black beard. In fact, the Sahaba used to describe, they used to say, when we used to see him praying, we used to see his beard hit his chest as he would recite Quran. He had some gray hairs in his beard. Some gray hairs. He used to have a vein on his forehead that would appear when he would become angry or distressed. Sahaba described, they said he had, he had broad shoulders, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a large chest, a flat stomach, not like mine, unfortunately, but a flat stomach. They described he had some hair on his chest, not a lot, but some hair on his chest, and his hair would come down, and he had what they described like a snail trail. It would come down to the bottom of his stomach. They described him of having large hands, soft like silk. He was built like an athlete, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even in old age, even when he reached old age, his stomach never went past his chest. And really, why would it? Why would it? <laughs> Aisha describes, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she's telling her nephew, Urwa. She says, wallahi, ibn akhti, wallahi. We used to see the moon, then the full moon, then the full moon. Two complete months used to pass us by and not a single flame, no cooking, no boiling of any sort. Not a single flame would be made in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People think when you get her, uh, you heard this, this is amongst the Arabs. That when you get fat and big, this is barakah. Wallahi, this is ghadab from Allah. This is not barakah. So they asked, Harwa, you know, Harwa asked his auntie, they said, my auntie, and how did you people survive? Two months. Today, if you go home now and there's no cooking, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. What are you doing at home, woman? She said, al-aswadan, al-tamru, wal ma We survived off dates and water for two consecutive months. <coughs> he was always smiling, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, the Sahaba described his character that if you ever spoke to him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa if you ever spoke to him, he never turned his head, never. He would always turn his body and give you his shoulders and gave you his full attention. If you shook his hand, he would never remove his hand until you removed it first. They described his personality, his character. They said he had the quality that is now definitely lost in our ummah, unfortunately. But he had a character, he had a quality called haya. Today we think haya is a weakness. Mastul ma is zalami. We don't, no, no, no. We need strong people who talk. Your prophet didn't talk much, but when it came to action, by Allah, there was no one like him. In fact, when they described his hayat, they said he was like a virgin woman behind the veil. But don't for a second think that this was weakness. <laughs> See, unfortunately, we think hayat is weakness. No. Because the same sahaba, they described the Prophet of Allah. They said, Wallahi, when we were on the battlefield. Yes, your Prophet was on the battlefield. They said, when we were on the battlefield and the fighting got so intense that we couldn't fight anymore. They said, Wallahi, we used to run behind the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he continued fighting like a warrior. 
But I'm not here to impress you with the looks of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm here to ask you sincerely, my brother. Do you love him like he loved you? Do you love, do you love your Habib like he loved you sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How much do you know about your Prophet, my brother? And be truthful to yourself. I ask you, his name is Muhammad. Muhammad what? What's his surname? Do you know his surname? Does he even have a surname? How many brothers and sisters does he have? Did he have any? What's the name of his mother and what's the name of his father? Do you know them? So there's always a cowboy. Oh yes, mashallah, I already know them. Please sit down and try to understand where I'm going with this. Do you know the names of his wives? Do you know their names? Your mothers, we claim they're the mothers of believers. Do you know the name of your mother, my beloved brother? Any child now, if you were to ask any child now and tell him, come here son, come here young boy, what's the name of your mother? If he said, if he said to you, I don't know, what does that say about his relationship? Which one of you, he doesn't know the name of his mother? Yet all of us, most of us, I challenge, give me the names of all of his wives. Do you know them? Do you know the names of his children? Do you know his seerah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Today we know the seerah how? Information, point form. His father died when he was born. His mother died at six. Then his grandfather looked after him. Then he be This is how we know seerah. But do we apply Sira to my life? What relationship? Why are we told? Why do the scholars tell you understand the Sira of Rasulullah? Why is it important to the Muslims? Do you know why? Everything you see that's happening around the world, everything that you see that is happening here, you will learn this from Sira. But because we don't know the Sira, everyone is confused and no one knows what's happening anymore. The seerah is important to every single one of you. Why? Because this is a clear dalil from Allah that His biography, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is a manuscript for every single one of you. That any one of you that chooses to follow this man, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what happened to him will happen to you, whether you like it or not. That's why the seerah is there. That's why his seerah is passed on, not for entertainment, not so we can sit there and teach the kids, mashallah, and then the Prophet of Allah went to Medina. Everyone thinks, you know, him going to Medina was this nice, very rosy, him and Abu Bakr holding hands all the way. What's the purpose of us knowing that he was exiled from his land and he was sent to Medina? What's the purpose? What's the relation with me? You know what that means? That it doesn't matter where you live in this world. If you choose to follow Deen, there will come a time, yes, even in Copenhagen, there will come a time where you will be forced to leave this place, whether you like it or not. None of you are better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. None of you understood Deen more than him. None of you has better adab, better akhlaq, better relationship. Yet Allah forced him to leave. What makes you think there's not coming a time where you will have to leave this place? No, no, people tell me, no, brother, if we just stay quiet, if, you know, it's just a storm, we're waiting for the storm to blow over, if everyone just shuts his mouth and everyone does his work and everyone prays his salah, we will be fine. You meskeen, you have no idea of seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's why you think like this. That's why you act like this. The best habit to Allah was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the best ummah to ever walk the earth with the Sahaba, yet they were forced to leave their homelands. They were forced to move their homelands. Why? Please, my brothers in the back, if we can move forward. My last part, I'll reward you. Khalas, khalas, akhimalash. Please, everyone in the back, please move forward. Why is the seerah important? Why? Because it's a guideline for any person. If you choose Allah and His Prophet, if you choose to follow Deen, then understand fully that what happened to Him will happen to you whether you like it or not. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. People tell me, look at the world that we live in. 
We're supposed to be living in the West, democracy and freedom of speech. Wallahi, this applies to everyone except the Muslim. Not you. In Mecca, everything happened in Mecca. Don't think we live today in democracy. Mecca had more democracy 1400 years ago than the world has ever seen since. Everything and anyone was allowed in Mecca. Jews, Christians, everything was allowed in Mecca. Pagans, atheists, everything was there and everything was welcomed and they all lived in peace and harmony. They all lived in peace and harmony. Until one man decided to say, La ilaha illallah, then all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose. Why? Why? Laws will change. Wallahi, they will implement laws that goes against constitution. Now, this Donald Trump, he's trying to say that, you know, he will impose laws that goes against the very, the very constitution of the country. Wallahi, it will pass and the people will love it and it will be accepted so long as it's against the Muslims and not against anyone else. You think this is new? Do you think this is new? For the Meccans, any person coming into their land was a guest and it was a sunnah for the Arab, not, not Muslims. It was a sunnah for the Arab that anyone that enters their country, he is your guest, you are to honor him and protect him. Yet when it came to exiling Rasulullah they all stood together united at this. Why is this important? No one talks about this part of the Sirah A. Why is this important? So long as you choose to follow Deen, so long as you choose to follow the Sunnah, then wait for everything that happened to him by Allah, it's coming to you whether you like it or not. <coughs> That's Deen. And there will come times of compromise. There will come times where they will try to compromise with you. That, hey, we don't have a problem. You want a masjid? We'll give you a masjid. You want to pray? Pray. You want to fast? Fast. Just don't bring your Islam outside onto the streets. Do you think this is new? You think this is new? Obviously, because we don't know Sirah. No, this is not new. They presented your Prophet with the same thing. They said to him, Ya Muhammad, we will worship your Lord for one day, and you worship our Lord for one day. No. Tab Ya Muhammad, we will worship your Allah for one week. You worship our gods for one day. No. We will worship your Allah for one year, Ya Muhammad. We will worship Allah for one year. All that we ask, Ya Muhammad, bring peace, but khalas, enough fighting, Ya Muhammad. How much more do you want, Ya Muhammad? Please, Ya Muhammad, we will worship Allah for one year. You just worship our gods for one day. No. Ya Muhammad, what do you want? You want money? By Allah, we'll make you the richest man in Mecca. No. You want women, Ya Muhammad? Do you want women? Is this why you're doing all this? You want women? We will choose the prettiest, the most beautiful of women, and we will marry them all to you. No. Work with us, Ya Muhammad, work. We've given you every option. Look, look, at the, look at the strategy. This man doesn't want peace. This man doesn't want to live. This, look, we gave him every option and he refused. And his uncle said to him, he said to him, please, please, Ya Ibn Akhi, please. Oh, my nephew, khalas, wa, anaf, anaf. These people, they're trying to work with you, Ya Muhammad. Come up with something. He says to him, oh, my uncle, if they gave me the sun in one hand and they gave me the moon in the other, I will never, ever leave this path. It's not up to me. This is not an option. This is not a luxury that I have. Today, how many Muslims, because of his job, he's happy to shave his beard and tell me, well, brother, this is, we have to work with people. How many brothers who his wife, he really wants his wife to wear niqab. In, in his heart, he knows that he's, but brother, this, these people don't understand. Go. Go. When you start selling your deen for something very small, what is left of you? Why is Sirah important? Why entertainment? So I can tell you what day he was born and what day he died and what day he got married. You think this is why we study Sirah? But to understand from Sirah, 
that Allahu Akbar. If Allah did this to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no one, you cannot escape it. You cannot escape it, my brother, because this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah wa dhiwa lakum. إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونصلي على الحبيب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. My beloved brothers, let me tell you very clearly. By no means am I imposing that we become angry and hateful people and that we're here to fight the world. No. Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he spoke about رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said what? He said we have sent you as a رحمة للعالمين يا محمد. We sent you. I'm not telling you what the Mashayikh think of Rasulullah. Allah testifies in Quran that we sent you, O Muhammad, as a rahmah for humanity. Yet even he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at his life. Look at his life. Why do you think that she will be treated any better than how he was treated, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why have the Muslims become so foolish into thinking that, no, I'm going to do a better job than him? That's his sunnah. I remember me, I'm going to tell you about myself. I remember when I was young and clean shaven and I had spikes in my hair and gel in my hair. Everywhere I went, everyone loved me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was in Mecca, what was he known as? As Sadiq al Amin. Everyone loved Rasulullah, the Muslim. Everyone loved him, the non Muslim. He was a Sadiq al Amin, the most loved young boy in Mecca. I remember when I was young. Everywhere I went, Ahlan wa sahlan bi Muhammad, Ahlan wa sahlan. Wallahi, I had lots of non-Muslim friends and we used to go to clubs and have fun. And yes, we are exactly the same and let's just all get along and everything was fine. Everyone loved me. But as soon as, as soon as I started growing a little bit, as soon as I started to look a little bit different to the next man, What happened to Muhammad? What happened to him? Who's he hanging out with? Allahu Akbar. What happened? Last week I was with you in the club. Last week I was with you in the office. Last week we were best friends. What's the problem? Why? Because now I grow a little bit. Is this what's stressing you out? Is this what's stressing you out? How many young boys come to me? And they tell me, Akhi, when I used to go to the clubs for three days, not come home for three days, my mom and dad, when I come back, Ahlan wa Sahlan bi ibni. Now, because I grow my little beard and I go to the masjid, I come home a little bit late. Where are you? What's happening? What is this? What, who are you? Allahu Akbar, this is not new. Look at your Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will find the exact same thing there. You could be the most loved, but as soon as you show any sign of deen, any sign of, hang on, I challenge the status quo, I choose Allah and His Prophet, the whole world will come to fight you. Where do you find your comfort? In Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do they attack your women outside in the street? Are they attacking your women? Know that the women of the Sahaba were also attacked. They accused the mother of believers, Aisha, they accused her of zina. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are not any special, your wife is not any better. People tell me, Akhi, it's very hard to find genuine halal meat. Very difficult in this country. Let me tell you, my brother, your Habib, for three years they were boycotted. You're complaining because you can't find kifta and shawarma and I don't know what. Your Habib, for three years, three years there was nothing to eat. The Sahaba had to eat the leaves from the trees. They said, excuse me, they said our droppings became like the droppings of animals for three years. That's the price for deen. That's the price for deen. No one wants to pay the price anymore. Everyone wants to go to Jannah, but nobody wants to buy. Everyone wants, for the, everyone wants Islam to spread, but not at my expense. I'm busy, Akhi, I'm working. Sirah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a step-by-step -step guide to any single person that wants to follow deen. You want to become a better Muslim? There's no escaping. What happened to him will happen to you one way or another. 
That's why the seerah is important to us. That's why we need to start studying the seerah. Not in point form. I don't want you to study seerah so you can tell me what day he was born and what day he died and what day he did his migration. To me, that doesn't matter to me. But we study the seerah. We teach it to our children. We teach it to ourselves. Why? To have a better understanding. What happened to him will happen to you if you choose his path. I hope I have made this clear. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who learn and follow the seerah to the absolute tea. نسأل الله عز وجل أن يغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء والأموات. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide every single human being onto the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take victory to the Muslims wherever they are, wherever they're fighting, struggling, hungry, in need. Ya Allah, be with them, help them, shade them, shelter them, clothe them, feed them. Ya Allah, give them victory, give us victory. Ya Allah, unite their hearts and unite our hearts. Ya Allah, guide every single human being. Ya Allah, guide every single soul on the face of this planet to the deen, to your deen, to your Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa nusalli ala al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atuhu. Thank you.